In part C of our screencasts on divide and conquer and solving recurrence relations, we now look at recursion trees, which we've seen before, but we'll take a more detailed look at them. You may have noticed that the diagram of the recursive structure of the maximum subarray solution looks like one of those recursion trees that we used to describe the uh, merge sort procedure. For example, here we have the overall top level call and at that level we have to do some amount of work here that was C N because we had to process all the N elements as we looked for the maximum crossing subarray and then we did recursive calls where we have N over 2 but we have to do some and we have to do some constant amount of work on those N over 2 subarrays to look at the crossing subarrays for them and so on. And so this looks very much like the tree that we drew before. I'll just redraw it here, where we have Cn at the root level, and then we divide into problems of size n over 2, Cn over 2, and then we divide them into subproblems of Cn over 4, and so on, down into where the subproblems are all of size 1, so it's just C's all the way across. And then you may recall the previous analysis. We noticed that uh, each row sums the C of N. And then we did the argument that the height of the tree, uh, because how many times can you divide N in half before you get to uh, 1? The height of the tree was log base 2 of N. And then from this overall thing, we came up with a total complexity. Uh, at, at that time, it was for merge sort of CN log n plus cn, uh, because actually this was, uh, I should have said here, log n plus 1, because it's log n before you reach the last case, the, the 1. So log n plus 1 times cn is cn times log n plus cn times 1. And so this was the solution. Suppose we have an algorithm that divides up a problem into four subproblems and it's able to determine that one of those four subproblems is unproductive and throws it away, so it only has to recurse on three of them. And it does some extra work in, that requires n squared time in the dividing up and the combining aspects. So we get this recurrence relation, Tn is 3t for the three recursive calls, n over 4 for the size of the subproblems, but n squared, theta of n squared work at um, each level. So before we can draw the recursion tree for this, we need to rewrite this, getting rid of the theta notation using an implied constant. So we're going to write this as t of n is equal to 3t n over 4 plus c n squared, where c is a constant implied by the asymptotic notation. Now let's uh, draw the tree for this. Well, at the root level is a node for t of n. But then t of n is equal to this expression, so we consider what does the branching do. So, well, there's three branches, so we're going to draw three lines. And before we go any further, let's just replace this t of n squared. We're leaving behind the cost that happens at that level, which is the, the c n squared is the cost of that level. Now, each of these branch level will be whatever it costs for the n over 4 size problems. But here we can just plug n over 4 into this equation for t of n over 4, where n over 4 is now replacing n, would be 3t n over 4 over 4, which is n over 16. Uh, so once again, we can now replace this with what's left behind, which is the c of this problem size squared, because n over 4 is the size of the problem at each of these levels. And at a given level, you square the problem size and multiply by c. And then we branch again, each of these making three recursive calls. And continuing on from there, we would write t n, well, it's n over 4, but n is n over 4, so it's t n of six, over 16 across each of these. But then, of course, the same thing happens. We substitute n over 16 into this whole thing here. We're going to replace that with the constant times the problem size squared that is left behind on each one of these. And I'll just write out the last one here. 
So this continues on, each of these branching three times, until eventually we hit a whole bunch of problems of size one. So the first thing we need to do, remember with recursion trees, we've got the recursion tree here. Uh, we think we've accounted for all the costs involved in running this algorithm. You know, at, at the top level, there's a n theta of n squared cost, which we're representing as cn squared, where the c will be a constant determined by the de meeting this definition. And then the cost of dividing up into three subproblems of size n over 4. And then the whole thing is re applied recursively. So the cost of that level, the subproblems, and so on. But to get the overall cost of the tree, it's kind of analogous to getting the area of a rectangle, you know, multiply width times height. Essentially here we want to sum the values across each row, and then we want to ask, you know, how many are those vertically. Uh, so let's look across each row here. So here we have cn squared for this level. We'll draw some lines here. But what's the cost across this level? Well, there's n over 4 squared, 4 squared is 16, and we've got an n squared, and there's 3 of them. So there's 3 divided by 16 for the 4 squares times n squared, and the c is in there too. So we're going to write that as 3 sixteenths cn squares. Here we had 1 cn squared, here we have 3 sixteenths of them. Okay, how many do we have at this level? Well, you can see from the branching, there's going to be nine things, which uh, nine is three squared, and there's going to be 16 squared in the denominator times cn squared. So there's going to be, I could say, nine sixteen squared, but why don't I write it more similar to that? And this is part of the trick here, is you think of, of a way to express things so that th something is in common across all the rows. So what is that in terms of 3 sixteenths? Well, that's 3 sixteenths squared, cn squared. So the 3 squared is the 9 things. The 16 squared is the fact that you've got a 16 in there that's squared because that's the problem size. The n squared comes from that, and the c is there. So we've got a pattern here. Uh, of course, uh, this is 3 sixteenths to the 1, and 3 sixteenths to the 0 is 1, which we won't write there. Uh, so we've got uh, 3 sixteenths to the i-th power, where the i starts at 0, 1, 2, and then it just keeps going. And then we need to throw something in for the base case. Well, let's notice here that the sub-problem size for a node at depth i is, well, at uh, the first level, it's n, which is n divided by 4 to the 0, n divided by 1. Here, it's n divided by 4 to the 1. Here it's n divided by 4 to the 2. So the subproblem size of depth i is n divided by 4 to the i. So we want to know when does, when does that get to uh, 1? Well, n equals 1 when 4 to the i is equal to n, because n divided by n equals 1. Or I should say the size is equal to 1, just not to confuse the two different n's. So when is this 4 to the i equal n? Well, uh, the power to which you raise 4 to to get n is, by definition, log base 4 of n. Log base 4 of n is going to be the height of the tree. That's when, when you get to the problems of size t of 1. So including the uh, i equals 0, we have a total of log base 4 of n plus 1, yeah, that's the one up here. Remember when I did the uh, the green thing with the previous one? I forgot that one at first. Uh, so there's log base 4 of n plus 1 levels, and each level has how many nodes? 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 to the 2 is 9. So it's 3 to the i nodes. So now we're going to substitute i equals log base 4 of n into 3 of i, and so we get 3 of log base 4 of n is how many nodes there are in the bottom level. But let's rewrite that. Remember the rule where you can say a log base b of c is c log base b of a? Um, so we can rewrite this to be n log base 4 of 3 in the bottom level. So whatever it costs to do this thing over here, we assume that it's a constant amount of work per the simplest subproblem of size 1, but there's n 
log base 4 of 3 of them. So the sum across this level here is this expression here. So I hope you've absorbed that. I now want to erase the bottom to make some room for the next step. I am going to note here that we have log base 4 of n minus 1 levels plus this last one here. We're not quite done solving this with this recursion tree. We have to now add up all these things. We've got all the rows. We need to add these up and then we need to um, you know, solve it to make it to a simpler expression. So let's just start adding them up. We got t of n is equal to first level, the second level, and the third level is the same thing except 3 16 squared. And continuing the pattern, we see that this is going to keep going until we get to log base 4 of n minus 1. And then we got to add that last term here for all the base cases. So that's our expression for the total work done in this recursion tree. But now we need to simplify it. And to do that, I'm going to clean up the screen again some more. Okay, so the recursion tree has done its work. It's given us a formula. And now we have to do our work in turning that into something comprehensible. So first of all, this is, of course, is a summation where we have 3 16 to the power of 0 cn squared, 3 16 to the power of 1 cn squared, dot, 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 all the way up to 3 16 to the power of log base 4 of n minus 1. So let's just write that as a summation. This item here will not be inside the summation. Uh, so let's write that out. I goes to 0 from 0, which is for this one up here, to log base 4 of n minus 1 of what? Well, 3 sixteenths to the ith power, 0, 1, so on, c n squared, plus this extra term for the, the base cases. Now, there is a formula in the back of the book, A5, for solving this kind of summation. Um, if you read the textbook, it'll show you what a mess it produces, something that looks kind of hard to uh, simplify. Sometimes, when we're doing asymptotic analysis, we don't need an exact solution. We just need bounds. So let's say we're just looking for an upper bound. And uh, we can turn this into in inequality. And then we can let this thing run to infinity. And that gets rid of that awkward expression up there that we don't know exactly what to do with. And let's just use another formula, actually A6. But I get ahead of myself. Let me just write it out first. So we get that. And now we can apply formula A6. I have a sticker in the back of my book. I'm always referring back to these formulas, and you probably should do the same. So the, this is for the uh, infinite geometric series. Formula says we go from k to infinity, sum x to the k, then that's equal to 1 over 1 minus x. So what is what here? Well, instead of k, we got i. k x to the k, what's x? Well, x is 3 sixteenths. So if we just plug in, this says we want 1 over 1 minus 3 sixteenths. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the summation. And that simplifies to, well, 1 minus 3 sixteenths, of course, is 13 sixteenths. But it's 1 over 13 sixteenths, so let's uh, flip it. It's just 16 thirteenths, cn squared plus theta log base 4 of 3. Log base 4 of 3 is less than 2 because this is a number that you raise, that raise 4 to the power of to get 3. And if you raise 4 to the power of 2, you get something a lot bigger than 3. So this is an exponent much smaller than n squared. So we can go back to our world of asymptotic terms and say this is just big O of n squared. Now, why did I write O instead of theta? Well, that's because up here we did this thing here. We took a larger function. So we can't claim that this is a tight bound based just on this analysis alone. However, if you look back at the uh, recursion tree that I erased, or, or just back at this term right here, this is in the root of the recursion tree. So even at the root of the recursion tree, we're already contributing n squared. So it's certainly also omega of n squared because 
this thing had to be accounted for. So we can conclude what we wanted, um, which is theta of n squared. Now we can verify this actually using substitution. Well, here very quickly is how we would do it with substitution. So suppose I want to show that t of n is defined here is big O of n squared, as we have claimed from the recursion tree analysis. Well, what does that mean? That means there exists some constant, call it d, since we already got a c here, such constant d n squared uh, such that this holds for some d greater than zero. So if we can show that that's true, uh, then we've, we've shown it to be order of n squared. So let's now apply the inductive hypothesis. Let's suppose that it's true for all n smaller than the n we're currently considering. That would mean it's actually true for this n over 4 in particular. And so by the inductive hypothesis, we can replace t n over 4, just put n over 4 instead of n there, with d n over 4 squared. So just write it out as 3 d n over 4 squared plus c n squared. I hope that's clear what we're doing there. Um, by the inductive hypothesis, our claim here holds for smaller n. And that claim is, by definition, expressed this way. That's the definition of the big O, that we can find this constant that makes n squared bound it. So we can just substitute in our claim here, and we get that. And then we've got, here we're just you know back to algebra again. So let's see what this, how this works out. That's equal to 3 uh, sixteenths. We're going to take out that 4 squared, d n squared plus c n squared. And this is actually, here, we, here we've got um, some n squared stuff in there, and we need to show that this is true for, this is the form of the, the hypothesis we're trying to prove. We're trying to get to something like that, and we have actually proven it. We have to specify for which d it holds. So d has to be greater than or equal to 16, 13. C. Well, how did they figure that? Well, that sort of comes out of the blue and is unexplained. Let's take a closer look here. This expression here, I'm going to write n squared times 3 sixteenths d plus c. And then on this side of the equation, I'm going to write a question mark because we're trying to prove the relationship. We don't know it yet. I'm going to write d n squared, but we're saying that it will work with d being at least 16 13c. Well, let's substitute that 1613c in here for d. Well, the 16 is cross out, 1613c. So let's just cross those out. That becomes 313c. And how many c's is that? Well, that is 1313c's. And by the way, I, I didn't write the n squared on this side, so I got to erase it from that side. We know the n squares on both sides. We're just comparing these factors. So here we got a total of 3 and 13. We got a total of 16, 13 c's. And that indeed is less than or equal to 16, 13 c. And so we have shown that t of n is less than or equal to dn squared, which is the exact form of the hypothesis to be shown. We were claiming this, but that is equivalent to claiming this. And so that proves by substitution that the analysis is correct. So that concludes the third part, or part C, the topic of recurrence relations, solving them using recursion trees. We've got one more part left, the master theorem.